Hey, welcome to Module 12, Managing Your Team. And this is the virtual presentation for Chapter 18, Managing Your Team, which is Management Functions. It's the virtual classroom presentation for Thursday, November 30th. It replaces the in-class presentation. Uh, and it is for EDU 417P. PEP 417 and EDU 417H, which is the methods, materials, and observation of physical education, health education, and coaching. And this is in the coaching section of the class, which covers module 10, 11, and 12. And this is specifically module 12 in chapter 18. Uh, this is Dr. Kish. And once again, this is the virtual classroom pl presentation. You can do one of two things. You can either click the icon on the top left that has the speaker and scroll through this presentation uh, slide by slide and you'll have to click each of the speaker icons and then click the little arrow to play and you can take your notes um, and listen to the audio or you can go to the top and hit slideshow hit from beginning and it'll play like a movie. As soon as the audio for each slide's done, it'll move to the next slide and auto start the audio. The one thing you need to do is make sure you go to your journal activity for chapter 18. Uh, open that up in Canvas. Copy and paste those journal questions into a Word document and take notes on those 11 important journal questions just like you would classroom notes, and you'll turn that in uh, since this is replacing the classroom presentation for Thursday the 30th of November. You need to turn those notes in for that journal activity on those 11 important points uh, by 8 p.m. on uh, November 30th. So make sure you uh, do that when you listen along to this. Uh, some of the information will be on the text and the slides, and some of it will only be on the audio, so you need to uh, listen to as well as read along uh, to this uh, presentation and turn that journal activity in to have some integrity to make sure you uh, listen to and read and actively uh, participated in this classroom presentation. All right, have a great time with this. Um, this is uh, the last big presentation. We'll have another uh, virtual presentation that uh, introduces a character building activity. Um, but we will move on to uh, introducing uh, the rest of the information on the next slide. So this is the coaching unit information. In module 10, principles of coaching, we went over coaching philosophy, determining your objectives or goals, selecting your coaching style. That's how you're going to impart uh, your philosophy and your goals into your team. We talked about coaching character and motivation. And a lot of your team management is how you're going to build character and then uh, motivate your athletes. Uh, so that, that's how you'll manage your team behavior. And then when we manage and lead our team, Module 12, we'll talk about that, how you build your rules and policies and uh, routines in managing your athletes' behavior. And then your management functions or how you actually provide leadership and management for your teams, all the different hats per se, you will wear as a coach or all the management duties. So what we'll do in chapter 18, we'll break down these management functions. Uh, we'll act like, uh, or we'll introduce them to you as uh, an organization and we're hiring different managers for different departments. So we will act, uh, introduce them as different manager positions, but those are the different management functions you will do on the job as a coach. So this is module 12, managing your team. Uh, we started with chapter eight last time, managing athletes behavior. We're moving along to chapter 18. So you should read chapter 18, managing your team. And this uh, video lecture will uh, supplement that and provide you uh, additional information as well as application material for those management functions and how to um, impart all the information from the textbook, bring it to life and how to wear those different hats and provide leadership uh, and use those management skills with your uh, team. And remember, this isn't just about coaching. 
This could be about how you apply this in different situations, whether you're in an organization, uh, leading a business, uh, leading different people. We can always translate anything we do from coaching into any other field uh, business. It could be with our family, it could be with a group. Um, so remember, we can always apply our lessons that we talk about um, for an education class or for coaching or for anything into any field. So our module 12 activities. Uh, for this uh, specific lecture, your background reading was chapter 18, Managing Your Team and the Successful Coaching Book. Uh, make sure you try to keep that book. Um, don't sell that back if you have it. You never know when you'll go into coaching. This is a great book. I still have it, uh, several editions on my uh, professional library. There's all kinds of different things you might use in the future. So try to hold on to that book. Um, it's a great resource to have. Listen to this virtual lecture all the way through. Um, there's audio enhanced into it. I, I explained uh, how to two different ways to play that through. Complete the journal activity. So if you haven't yet, pause this video, go into Canvas, open your uh, chapter 18 journal activity, look at those 11 questions. You should probably copy and paste that into a Word document. Uh, and then use that Word document to actively take your notes. Uh, and then you will just be able to turn your notes in into the journal activity uh, assignment box in Canvas, and you'll have that done. Um, the, the, the journal activity is basically taking the high points of this presentation, taking notes on it, and then submitting that. Uh, it is due Thursday at 8 p.m. And then make sure if you haven't yet, the observation is due. Uh, your final observation log is due tomorrow. Your signature assignment, the observation reflection, is due on Saturday. So make sure you're following the assignment directions in Canvas. Uh, for both of those, they need to be completed um, fully with your correct amount of hours signed off on, on the log, uh, turned in by the deadline with a clear picture. Um, your signature assignment needs to follow the outline, use headings, uh, use examples, um, be be direct and, and exactly follow that assignment guide and turn that in on time, use college level writing. And then if you haven't yet, you need to really work on that final project, your personal philosophy of coaching or personal philosophy of PE teaching if you're uh, assigned the alternate activity and follow that outline directly. Use examples from the module 10, 11, and 12 uh, and embed all of the things you might have seen through the observation as well. Make sure you align it with your knowledge, skills, abilities, and learning from the coaching uh, modules uh, and build your own personal philosophy of coaching. So the chapter 18 objectives for managing your team, these are the things you'll learn by the end of this virtual lecture and you should be able to do. You should be able to discuss, summarize, and apply each of the seven important management functions associated with coaching. This is going to be aligned with the Missouri Teaching Standards 1, 3, 6, 7, and 8, and the Lincoln University Health and Wellness Standards 1, 3, 6, 7, and 8. You should be able to analyze, synthesize, and investigate the preseason, in season, and postseason responsibilities of coaches associated with each of the seven management functions. We'll go over each of those individually. Uh, so that's where we will talk about each of the seven specific management roles of a coach. And you see the Missouri Teaching Standards and Lincoln University Health and Wellness Standards that uh, that learning objective is aligned with there in red. We will discuss, summarize, and analyze the various tasks for managing participants. We will also discuss and critique the important duties, responsibilities, and concepts of game management. And we will consider advanced planning, pre-contest, in-contest, and post-contest, uh, and how that relates back to those duties and responsibilities. So we'll, we'll consider all of the different areas that um, you would be able to manage a game. 
all right so there's different areas you have to think about it way in advance right before the game during the game and then after the game or contest and then we will apply concepts of psychology sociology leadership positive team culture and character development to design a process for selecting team captains so that will be our end of module activity is putting it all together to apply those concepts to design our own process for selecting team captains so that's what we're going to learn by the end of the day we'll be able to discuss summarize synthesize investigate analyze critique and apply a lot of different things through our learning objectives so our journal activity for chapter 18 this is our journal activity you could either copy and paste it from the slide which might be hard to do or you can open canvas go to module 12 go to the journal activity assignment you should copy and paste the chapter 18 journal activity questions out of that uh, you can even open the assignment if you want to and do it right there or you could copy and paste those activity questions into a word document and then as you complete the rest of this virtual lecture those are the 11 high points that you would answer just like you're taking classroom notes so what are you going to do you're going to listen to the virtual lecture embedded into this powerpoint you can do that one of two ways you can either go slide by slide kick on click on the speaker icon at the top left corner and then click on the play button which is a little triangle or you can go to the powerpoint mode go to the top ribbon hit slideshow and click play from beginning or play from current slide and it'll play just like a movie and at the end of each audio clip for the slide it'll just move to the next one and continue to play you'll have to hit pause if you need to stop and take notes or rewind or whatever the case uh, to go back and do things so you'll complete your journal activity by providing detailed college level well written and factually correct answers to each of the 11 questions and you'll do that just like taking notes number your answers 1 through 11 take those notes you might have to add A's B's and C's uh, it'll tell you do you want one sentence two sentence um, label different things explain things give me sentences whatever the case a lot of the things you'll be able to see on the screen some of the things will only come up in the audio so the deadline for this being that this replaces the classroom lecture for Thursday November 30th will be 8 p.m. Thursday November 30th this will be available early so you have an opportunity to watch it earlier in the week so that's your journal activity for chapter 18 you'll complete the journal activity questions and submit that to canvas chapter 18 managing your team that's the textbook chapter in successful coaching from uh, Rainier Martins uh, make sure you read that this lecture will enhance all of the material there that chapter will provide the background uh, we will actually today discuss in this virtual lecture all the things to make that material come alive and then how to actually take that material and apply it into a real life setting or situation. We'll start by introducing chapter 18, managing your team. So the management of the various details and responsibilities of a team are critical for providing a coach with the foundation for success. You can be an excellent teacher of skills. You can even be a master game tactician or even the greatest strategist, make real good game decisions, be the greatest chess player during the game. You can even work hard to develop a positive team culture you can have a great climate around your team people be drawn to your team you can develop awesome character traits have positive team character building activities and you can still fail as a coach if you lack the knowledge the skills the abilities the KSAs as we call them to handle the management and leadership functions required for your position you don't have the organizational skills the critical thinking skills the time management skills you're probably gonna fail even if you have all of those other abilities 
to lead a team. So you have to have that foundation of management skills and leadership skills to be successful. Or sooner or later, even if you have all of those other things that allow you to be great at coaching the sport, if you don't have the management skills, you'll end up eventually failing. So there are various management functions required for a variety of coaching positions. It depends on if it's an individual laid sport, like possibly track and field, cross country, wrestling, uh, a lot of those sports that that are determined more by individual uh, individuals, golf, tennis, or if it's a team sport. So those management functions are going to vary. If we think of football where 11 people play at a time or soccer or basketball or baseball. So the management functions are going to vary uh, between recreational sport, tra elite travel sport, high schools and colleges. Depends on your level of college too. So we're going to look at these management functions because they're a critical aspect of determining your success in the coaching field. They're usually a huge, huge part of how you're perceived by everybody in the field. That could be your bosses, your administrators, whether it's a principal or superintendent at the school level, whether it's a program administrator at the YMCA or community level. It could be other professionals in the field, whether it's other coaches. It could even be part of your evaluation process to determine if you're going to keep your job or get promoted. It could be your head coach if you're an assistant coach. It also determines how well the parents as well as your athletes think you lead the team. So remember, these management functions are critical to determining your long term and overall success as a coach. So Pay attention to these, try to understand them as we go, and you're going to have to keep developing your KSAs to be an excellent leader. So what are some management functions? They include concepts like planning, organizing, being able to effectively hire staff, train, evaluate, mentor people in your program. They're going to be around financing, budgeting, controlling money, directing and leading people in your organization, controlling things that might be controlling money, it might be controlling equipment, it might be controlling people, it might be controlling how you move things like logistics, and then leading. So how you lead people, how you lead the organization, your leadership skills. All right, time management is going to come in there as well. That goes into the organization and planning. Critical thinking skills also go in there. The ability to be forward thinking. So there's all kinds of functions that are involved in that management skills. So great coaches must learn <clears throat> when to personally complete things, right? When to personally complete these management functions and when to delegate different tasks appropriately. So you can't do everything. There's no way you can do everything. You cannot do that. Especially when you're, you have a team sport or you have different levels, you're going to have other coaches, you're going to have a coaching staff. There are some things as a head coach that you have to take on. You have to have a big part in developing positive team culture. You have to have a big part in overseeing eligibility. All right. There are some things you have to heavily be involved in or monitor. You've heard of the term lack of institutional control. That's when the head coach doesn't have a big part in some of the important things. So, but there are some other things that you can delegate appropriately and you might just monitor and let somebody else take charge of, but there are some things that you're gonna have to take charge of. So you have to determine what's important for you to take charge of and what's important for you to delegate and take off of your plate. Otherwise, you won't be able to do everything. So great coaches have to learn when they personally complete them, when they heavily oversee them, and when they can delegate them and just monitor them. There are seven important management functions that we're going to discuss. All right. So these seven important management functions 
could be called duties. So these are duties that a coach will do or they will assume in their leadership position. And we're going to discuss each of these in the concept of a separate management position. So we're going to imagine we're an organization and you're the CEO and you have to hire seven different managers to manage different departments. So the seven different departments are going to be run by these seven different managers. And then you're going to be the CEO. So you're going to hire a policy manager, an information manager, a personnel manager, an instructional manager, an event manager, a logistics manager, and a financial manager. So we're going to go over each of these different management positions. But in all, if you're a head coach, you might have to do each of these management positions by yourself and that could be a function or duty of your own job. So you'll hear people say, I have to wear a lot of different hats or have a lot of different roles or duties in my job. You could have to do all seven of these positions within your one job. So these are the seven important management functions and we're going to have one or more slides on each of these specific functions as we go. The first management function is the policy manager. So policy management refers to the application of team rules, policies, and procedures. So the policy manager is going to handle all of the things that refer to those, the team rules, making sure people follow policies and procedures. They're going to have to lay out things such as consequences. They're going to make, review, update, handle, distribute, all of those things such as policies and procedures, rules, consequences. So there's going to be different time frames that you're going to do things and a lot of these different management positions will go through the preseason, during the season, and the postseason and how these uh, responsibilities lay out. So when we talk about rules and policies and procedures, we might talk about our own team rules, but we also have to include different sets of rules. If we're in a school situation, the school is going to have rules. So we're going to have to follow our school rules. They might be integrated into our team rules, but we're going to have to follow the school rules. The conference, if we're in an athletic conference, they may have other rules that we'll have to follow as well. We might have association rules. So the association would be like your state association, the Missouri State High School Activities Association. Or if you're in a college, you might be the NCAA or the NAIA, all right? Or your school might have an athlete's code of conduct that's your athletic department rules. So there's going to be different policies and rules that you're going to have to apply to your specific setting. If you're in a recreational sport or an elite travel situation. It might be related to the tournament you're playing in or the league you're playing in or the organization you play for. You're going to have to look at all those different rules. So you might play in a tournament and that rules might be different than what your league play that's different than your organization you play in. So you're going to have to make sure you follow all of those different rules and policies and procedures. Uh, and facilities might have separate rules too. So let's then go into some of the responsibilities and how you um, work through those in different segments of your season. So the preseason, you're going to have to maybe review, update your policies and procedures and rules, and you might even consider your routines that we talked about last time. You're going to consider any new rules, whether it's your conference or sport. It could be your conference makes a new rule every year, the sport at the high school and college level and uh, undergoes some kind of rule change. You're going to make sure that your team understands them, your coach understands, your coaching staff understands them. And you may want to sit down with your team. And this is where if you're having your team be involved in any of making your rules or updating your rules from the previous year, this is where you're going to sit down with your team and discuss what we might want our rules and consequences to be as we're updating our rules or making our rules for the upcoming season. 
So this is where we're going to do all of that work. As the season starts, at the beginning of the season, we're going to want to present our rules and policies and distribute those in meetings to our team, our parents. We'll probably put it up on our website. If we have a team handbook, we'll do that. We would probably want to get those approved by our administration before we do that. If we're in a school, our athletic director or uh, our principal, possibly your school board might have to oversee some of those. It depends on your school policies. Uh, you might want to go, you know, make sure your college athletic department looks at it. Uh, and then as the season starts, you're going to have to apply your rules to your team and provide consequences when necessary when people break the rules, when there's misbehavior. You probably don't want to change rules as you go in the season. You're going to want to wait for that for the postseason. So in the postseason, that's where you want to reflect and revise any of your policies. Consider any specific controversy or, or difficult situations. Consider if you want to reflect on those things and revise any of your rules. You might want to make some notes for, we really want to change this next year. Is that going to be a coach's decision that you'll change it? Or is it going to be something you want to discuss with your team next year and let your team have some input on it? And then consider how that really affects your coaching philosophy. So remember to reflect and revise your coaching philosophy because your coaching philosophy leads to how your policies are going to be. So that's how you are going to set your goals, your objectives, and how you're going to impart your philosophy um, all has to do with policy management. The next manager, number two, is the information manager. And when we talk about information management, we're referring to the process of providing any type of information to any of our stakeholders. And these stakeholders could be our players, our coaching staff, our parents, our fans, the media. It could even be our administrative staff. Anybody involved could be alumni. Uh, it could be our school personnel. Uh, it could be our community members. So there's all kinds of people that we would provide information to. So there's various types of information we could provide. First of all, if we're providing information to our staff, uh, say our coaching staff, we might provide information about our team rules, what plays we're going to run. We might, like a playbook, we might provide some stats. We might want to provide our practice plan for the day. Uh, we might want to provide some drill information, like drawn up information about drills uh, or maybe even our scouting reports for the upcoming teams. Uh, we might want to provide information on our players, such as academic reports or injury reports. So there's all kinds of things we could provide to our staff. We might even need to have our staff information, like contact information, their resume, uh, <clears throat> background information, how long they work for us. Um, we might need to have uh, their evaluation reports, their personal goals. So there's things like that. Personnel records, this would be for the coach's personnel files or personal files. It could be their resume, their contract, their evaluation records. Uh, governance files, these are your policies and procedures, like your rules, your school rules, your conference rules, sports rules, all those things. Specific athlete information, that could be their physical exam files, their pre-participation physical exam, the PPE. It could be uh, information, contact information on their parents, it could be their insurance information, it could be uh, their sign-off information that they signed off on their school rules and their athlete code of conduct, it could be eligibility information, uh, it could be all kinds of information specific to the athlete, uh, it could even just be their sizes of, uh, of clothes if you, you purchase uh, apparel or shoes for them, it could be their uh, parents' contact information. Um, could be who's recruiting them, uh, things like that. Uh, practice plans, you could have an area for practice plans. I kept all my practice plans uh, for the longest time. Every year I coached, I would go back to previous years. Uh, I might think, oh, I ran this play at this time because I knew I drew up every play that I was gonna teach in practice plan or ran this drill. I could go back years before and pull things out and see how I ran a play or taught a drill. You might have your event plans. And then your events could be your special events. Did I run a senior night or a, uh, 
a, a military night or a local business night, um, where's the event script so I could reuse the event script or plan? Your logistics or travel plan, if you were going out of town, your overnight trip, who was rooming with who, what was, um, what bus company did we use, what was our budget, uh, what was our uh, leave time, uh, and that might even be pre-event stuff like when are we going to leave, like you might give people access so they know what time you're going to leave for specific events in the future. Scattering reports. Who are you going to give access to? Um, is there video clips there? Like, do you have your coaching staff and players with advanced scouting reports and video of upcoming opponents at the college level? You do that. They might have access to things on Huddle or Game Changer or different things. Statistics and results. Who gets access to that? Is it your media? Is it your parents? Is it your coaching staff? Is it your players? Who keeps that up to date? Who's going to distribute that? Um, how is it distributed? Is it sent out to specific people at specific times? Who's the person that immediately sends that out to the media after the game? Who's going to be responsible for that? Is that something you can delegate? Your financial and budgeting reports, where are you going to keep that? Uh, do you send it to the athletic director who needs to sign off on requisitions and purchase orders? Who keeps that up to date? How often do you analyze that? How do you report different things? Like, how do you report injuries? Who gets access to that? Does the athletic trainer send you specific things? Is it email? Is there a specific reporting process? How do you report things to parents? How do parents report things back to you? Um, how, how does that loop work between you and the athletic trainer, a doctor, all of those things? Uh, what about discipline reports? How do you handle that? Is there a specific form? What about suspensions? Um, awards. How do you re record awards? That's a big deal at, at the high school level, like when you're giving letters and you're keeping things for certificates and having those long-term awards, like when do people get pins? When do they get a varsity letter? When do they get different things? Um, and you, that's a systematic thing. And in, in a lot of school districts, that's uh, important to keep track of those things. Uh, the recruiting process, uh, who's responsible to keep track of that, uh, to send different things to different coaches, uh, statistics, um, game film, clips, all kinds of different things. Uh, the recruiting process can be daunting. Uh, high school coaches usually are kind of tasked to help with that a little bit. Um, they're expected to. So how, how does that work? When you're at the college level, how do you manage the recruiting process, recruiting um, of prospects? When do they become go from being evaluated to becoming prospects to becoming high target prospects? To becoming people you're going to invite on a visit. Uh, so that's going to be a different set of information when you're a college coach. And then references. Like you might have a reference section. This might include your rule book, your playbooks, uh, articles, a lot of different important files. It just depends on things that you want to keep. So how are you going to handle keeping and filing the information? Are you going to do it electronically? How are you going to keep your schedules together? Are you scheduling your facility? Are you scheduling your practices? Are you scheduling your games? How are you going to then put that information out to people, your players, your parents, your staff? Are you going to do that electronically? Are you going to do it on paper? Is it going to be a text? Is it going to be an email? What specific platform are you going to use? Are you going to use something like Game Changer or Huddle or Schedule Star? Those are all different platforms. Is it going to be on an app? Is it going to be um, so there's all kinds of different things you're going to have to consider when being the information manager. So when you're the information manager, there are the different segments or the different seasons. Uh, so let's go through it a little bit. Uh, we went through the different types of information, the different people you're going to have to deal with. So let's talk about the preseason. In the preseason, you're going to have to plan your information procedures. So how are you going to collect your data or your information? How are you going to assess it? How are you going to keep stats? How are you going to uh, keep video? How are you going to collect all the different information you need to? And how are you going to go through it? Then how are you going to disseminate it? That's distribute it. Who is going to be responsible to give it out to different people? Or are you going to, like I said, are you going to email it out? Are you going to fax it out. Some places only still today only take a fax in different newspapers. How are you going to uh, do that? Is it going to be a text message? How are you going to archive it? That means how are you going to keep it? 
all right? Because uh, the yearbook's going to want it. Um, their school districts are going to require you. That's probably going to be part of your contract is to keep updated stats, all right? What types of information or records are you going to keep, all right? How are, how are you going to do that? Like, you got, you're going to have to see what you're required to keep. You're going to have to keep data on different things. You're going to have to keep uh, injury data. You're going to have to keep, uh, for sure, you're going to have to keep stuff on, if you're a high school coach, you're going to have to keep information on concussions. Uh, you're going to have to keep academic data to know if people are eligible. You're also going to have to keep uh, different statistics. You're going to have to turn those in to be eligible for different things. You have to turn your statistics in for the district tournament in high school. You have to turn your statistics in or you can't be ranked at the college level. Um, so there's all kinds of different things uh, you're going to have to turn in. If you don't turn your officials' uh, evaluations in, you get fined and won't be able to play in different tournaments. So there's different types of information records you'll have to turn in. What are you going to use your specific software? Um, what are you going to use? Are you going to use um, Synergy? Uh, we went over some of the other ones. Are you going to use Huddle, Schedule Star, Game Changer? What are you going to use to keep track of your stats? What are you going to use to keep track of your video? What are you going to use to keep track of all your different records uh, along the way? Is it going to be something that it's just a system on a computer or are you going to use a cloud-based system? Most people use a cloud-based system so you can access it from anywhere nowadays. Who's going to provide that information to who? Who's going to be responsible? Is it something that the head coach does? Is it something an assistant coach does? Is it going to be who's going to then disseminate it or provide it to who? And then is there some checks and balances along the way? In the end season, things shift then. You shift from developing the information systems to using them. So all of those things we talked about in the preseason, you're actually going to do that. Then things are going to, you're going to scout opponents for team sports especially. Uh, you're going to focus in on scouting teams, what they do, tendencies, how how you're going to then break that down into how you can possibly take advantage of their weaknesses, how you're going to have to handle their strengths. You're going to look at team tendencies as well as individual, individual tendencies. You're going to possibly break that video down and show some of the video to your team. Uh, you don't want to overanalyze video and, and you want to focus in on your team too, but you want to do a lot of it and show your team a little bit of it and prepare your team. You're also going to have to report results and statistics. You're going to have to do some PR or public relations and some publicity and publicize your team and get that information out there and it needs to be in a timely manner. So you're going to, like I said, in the end season, you shift from developing all those systems to using all the systems we talked about in the preseason. In the postseason, there's a lot of required documentation and paperwork. So you're going to have to take all of your season results, records, statistics, you're going to have to archive them. You're going to have to get them to the right people. In high school, the yearbook's going to want stuff. You're going to have to keep statistics up to date. You're going to have to see if people have all-time records, put records up to date. There might be some kind of records on a wall in the junior college system and different things. You're going to have to turn those in. For the, if you happen to make it advance far enough in different tournaments, state tournaments or district tournaments or college tournaments, you'll have to have your updated season statistics in. Uh, you're going to have to turn in um, officials evaluations by the end of the year and different things or else you'll get fined. Most schools or colleges even at the end of the season you're going to have to use statistics to select people for different awards. You're going to have to do those different team management things like do an overall inventory. You're going to have to do uh, take the inventory, turn it into requisitions and budgets for the next year. You're going to have to balance your budget. You're going to have to do evaluations of your coaching staff. You're going to have to do probably a personal one on yourself, a self-evaluation, meet with your supervisor to evaluate, uh, get evaluated by yourself. Like they'll do a personnel evaluation on you with your self-evaluation and theirs of you. They'll generally work with you on what you evaluated your staff with and talk to you about that and then do an overall program evaluation. And then they're going to take your request for your items, your budget for next year, and some things you want to do with your program. So there's a lot of different things you're going to do there as the information manager in the different seasons. The third manager is the personnel manager. 
Personnel management refers to the human resources type of management functions for all employees and staff members. So th this would be everybody that the coach works with. It could be their assistant coaches, other coaches, their event staff, if they have to set that up. It could even be students that work for them uh, in like management roles or st statisticians or volunteers that work with the team. So there could be a lot of different people that the coach has to manage as personnel. It could even be working directly with somebody like an athletic trainer, uh, could be working with security personnel on game day, uh, could be working with people that take tickets, the scorekeeper, uh, the statistician, um, the PA announcer. So there are a lot of different people that the coach could work with. Uh, you might even, if you're a coach, have to set up things like the concession stand, um, you have uh, parent volunteers run a tournament. So there could be a variety of people that you might supervise in this role for personnel management. Um, if you're at a major institution, uh, you, you might even have like equipment managers and uh, different things like that. So let's look at some of the different uh, seasons um, you, you'll have to do some of these different roles and then we'll look at what you would have to do uh, separately on the next slide when we're in the role of managing your participants. So our preseason, you're going to have to determine which positions might be needed for your organization. All right, what open positions do we have? Uh, maybe we might even have to say, hey, we need another position. Uh, we're growing. Um, or we haven't had this position in the past, we lack this position, so you might have to write up a new position request to go to your organization to ask for one. Um, but we'll start with what positions do we have open? We need to fill our assistant coaches roles. We might need a good team manager uh, to help us with things, a good uh, person to do our video or help with our stats. Uh, do we need event staff to help us run our events? Um, like I said, that could be anywhere from a person at the scores table to run the clock uh, to keep the game book if uh, we're required to do that um, to do our PA announcing uh, do, or are we required to do those other things like take tickets and concession and things like that uh, do we have an athletic trainer is that our responsibility or does the athletic department get that so determine what positions are open uh, and then do those things like make sure those are advertised uh, recruit people for those, find out if there's good people in the area, try to get people to apply for those positions, do the interviews, uh, find somebody that fits our philosophy, and then get them hired, onboarded, inducted, trained up to be ready to go uh, by the time the season starts. Um, develop detailed job descriptions for each of those positions. Uh, they should really probably be done before people are hired, but then once you get your coaching staff together, you might move the job descriptions around a little bit. So you want a detailed assistant coach's job description, but if you have multiple assistant coaches, you're then going to shift the responsibilities around. And what do I mean by that? If you have multiple assistant coaches on, on a football staff, you're gonna break down different things based on their expertise. You might have an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator, usually maybe not at the high level of college, but usually the head coach is gonna take one of those roles and another coach that has some expertise is gonna take a different role. The head coach usually doesn't coach both of those offensive and defensive side of the ball uh, on football. Uh, and somebody's gonna probably coach the line and somebody's gonna coach the backs. So people are gonna coach different position groups. Uh, when you go to basketball, you're going to have something similar to that. Somebody is going to coach some of the guards. You might even have somebody that coaches the point guards. Somebody's going to coach the wing type players. Somebody's going to coach the big men or women, the post players. So you're going to maybe break those down by positions. You might even look at the coaching staff as what is their expertise? Is somebody more of a uh, offensive guru, somebody more of a defensive guru, somebody more understand the full court uh, press, somebody more of a half court. So you're going to look at your expertise of your coaching staff and you're going to see what they fit to de determine what their job description is going to be. 
at the college level, a lot of times coaches are going to scout different opponents. So you might break that down by who they scout on what their role is going to be for that specific game on your game preparation and game coaching. So if you watch a high level college basketball game, you'll see the head coach is going to walk the sideline and the person that's next to them a lot of times or is going to be talking the most in the huddle. If you watch the, the um, sideline is going to be somebody different a lot of times every game and it's going to be determined by who did the scout on that opponent who was the expert that covered the, the game scout on that opponent. So you're usually going to have another coach that is required or their job description is going to be like bench coaching. They're going to handle the players when they come on and off the, the, the floor and really is in, in professional baseball, they actually have a job description or a job category that is the bench coach. And they're required or not required, but their job, part of their responsibilities is to work with the psychology of the coaching to really work with, you know, coaches when they're on the bench or players when they're on the bench, when they come on and off of the field or the court um, to, you know, hey, what did you see? What are you doing right? What are you doing wrong? So uh, you might have somebody really working more with that than the flow of the game and the scouting. It's more working with the individuals on their thing, their thing. You might have somebody more in charge of player development. So they're not really working with the scouting, they're working with the development of people on their skills. So you're gonna really work on your detailed job descriptions and give people what their responsibilities are within the team. Somebody might be in charge of different things when you go back to you're in charge of statistics, you're in charge of sending out uh, information right after the game. So everybody needs to know what their duties are so people don't overlap and you don't let things fall through the cracks. So you'll do that in the preseason. You'll complete things like contracting process for officials, athletic trainers, coaches, games. Uh, the games will be something different, not necessarily in your personnel, but you'll have to do that with your personnel. In season, you need to be an effective communicator. You're the leader of this group. So you're going to manage and lead your personnel. So you have to effectively communicate with all of your groups. How do you communicate with your assistant coaches, with your staff, uh, your event staff, with your volunteers, with your game management team? Are you going to call meetings? Are you going to send out emails? Are you going to send out texts? What happens when a game gets canceled or moved? How do you effectively communicate with everybody to make sure that they know what's going on, that they know what their role is, that they know that a game time got changed? How can you be an effective supervisor or mentor when you have all these moving parts? You can't just throw people to the wolves. If you are at a high school and you have a varsity team and your junior varsity and freshman teams practice at the same time at different facilities, how can you effectively mentor your different coaches? You're going to have to be creative with that. You don't obviously want to leave your varsity practice. You might have to move some of those times around. You might have to, if you have a game at night, then instead of going home or going out to eat or doing whatever after practice you might have after school and waiting for your game, you might need to then go to your freshman practice and supervise, observe, mentor that freshman coach. You might have to go to their Saturday 9 a.m. game instead of sleeping in. Uh, so there's going to be some different things you have to do to learn how to be an effective supervisor or mentor and make sure that those coaches that are underneath you um, get to build and learn your program and philosophy and you can build those up as well. And you have to do that with your event staff too. You're going to have to take some time to train them. In the postseason, you have to organize and ref be reflective. So you're going to have to do be reflective on organized and reflective team meetings. So you're going to have to do that with your team. All right. You're going to have to do that with your coaches and with your staff. All right. So you'll have some reflective meetings. And you'll work with all those people. You'll have to be a good communicator there. And then you'll have to complete all your postseason duties with those people. So um, do you need to evaluate them? Do you need to have them um, involved in the budgeting process? Do you need to communicate with them about collecting equipment? So how do you need to help those people do all those things? How do you need to help your athletes move on? Do you need to communicate with them in the recruiting process to the next level? You need to also have that awards dinner. So um, People need to be involved in that. How do you communicate to make sure people get there? So managing personnel is, is important. In the end season too, I forgot to mention, 
you're going to have to communicate with your players and your students. So how are you going to manage that, that group as personnel? So that's what we're going to get to next on the next slide as managing your participants. So when we talk about managing participants, the personnel manager, you're responsible for managing and supervising participants. And that really depends on what level you're at. If it's the recreational sports level, parents are gonna bring them. A lot of times they're gonna sit in the stands, they might leave and come back. When you're at the high school level, um, you know they're gonna come out of school. There's the portal to portal law that you're responsible for them on their way to school until they get home. Um, so you're going to have to consider that at the college level. You recruit them. You're responsible for them while they're there. And you're responsible to help them grow up to be, you know, young men and women of character. You've promised their parents that you're going to do that. So you're going to be responsible for how they act in the community as well. So it really depends on your level of supervision. So this includes all the required management and supervision during practices, games, meetings, travel, if you're traveling away. Remember at a public school that requires portal to portal. You're, even though you might not be required to supervise them in the community, people are gonna think that you're responsible for that. So that character development and how you instill your philosophy is gonna have a big deal in how you manage your participants and how people visualize and consider how you manage them. So you talk about recruiting a prospects, that's important. So the recruitment comes first. If you're at the college level, you have to go out and develop a list of prospects. You're going to get these. You might subscribe to a recruiting service. You might go out and watch people play in summer leagues and games. And you might talk to alumni. You might talk to coaches in the area. You might get on the Internet. Uh, you're going to develop various lists and then you're going to evaluate prospects. You might do this on videotape. You might. Um, use other people's evaluations and you might go do this live and in person. It depends on your budget. You're then going to start the communication process with these prospects. At, at this point, the communication process is still in the evaluation phase. You're going to start the recruiting process um, at this point and determine like, are we evaluating them or we determine we're going to recruit them um, and most recruits don't understand that. Like, I would have to tell them, hey, I'm no longer evaluating you. I'm like recruiting you now. Somebody else might be evaluating you and they say they're recruiting you. Like, I, like I'm not evaluating you anymore. I know you can play for me. Um, at the time you start really recruiting people, you have to determine who's going to be an important decision maker or an important contact for that recruit. Is it their high school coach? Is it their mom or dad? Is it their brother? Is it their you know, select elite coach, their AU coach, their trainer, their dad, their their brother, their cousin, you know, um, their aunt, their who who is it? Who's going to help them make their decision? Is it their boyfriend, their girlfriend? Uh, you know, are they going along with their best friend out of college, um, a teammate, um, assistant coach? There, there's a lot of people, so you have to determine who that is, and you have to also recruit them a little bit, and then you'll set up the campus visit. Uh, at the campus visit, it depends on your level. How do you handle that campus visit? What can you do on it? Um, and then follow up on the campus visit and trying to get a commitment and a signing day and all of those things. The evaluation and selection of participants. It depends on what level you're at, right? You want to organize and manage the tryout. If you do tryouts, recruiting um, at the college level, you don't necessarily do tryouts, but at different levels. How do you organize and manage the tryout and selection process? Do you have detailed evaluation reports? Do you evaluate prospects? And then how do you handle um, cutting people from the team? Hopefully you don't just hang up a list. You actually meet with people and tell them why they made the team, why they, where they you know, fit upon their evaluation report, what their strengths and weaknesses are, so they know then how to set some goals moving forward. And you can set some goals and start the goal setting process right there. Why they didn't make the team and go over their evaluation report and let them know so they understand. And then they can possibly attempt to work on some of those things to make the team next year. Um, that actually helps people understand. Um, you might 
get somebody that will go work on that and come back out the following year. It's not, uh, it, it gives them a better feeling about the program and you as a coach that you actually took it seriously. They understand where they stand. They might respect you a little more, be a, become a fan then. They might decide they want to be a manager. You can, you know, managers are hard to find. Uh, and if they're at the school, they're probably going to have you as a teacher. So you don't want to have some bad feeling that you just hung a, a thing up. They look look at the list and uh, coach is a prick. So how do you handle that? You always really want to handle that with a detailed evaluation report and then have meetings with people to let them know why they did or didn't make the team and where they stand. And it's always better that you get a lot less flack from the parents if you have those type of ways to select participants. How do you communicate with your participants? You need to have various systems and expectations for communications. You need to follow the school rules. Um, how do you, like, are you allowed to text individual students? Some places still think that's a no-no. You should text in groups. Um, how do you handle social media or doing text chains? You have to be careful with that. Um, do you have a group text, a group chat, um, some kind of group message me? Uh, do you do that um, at different ages, different mixed sex genders with coaches? You have to always be careful doing the individual stuff. Do you call and have conversations? How does that communication sometimes tone doesn't get done in text. Sometimes you need to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but you need to have different systems and expectations in place um, for your communication uh, with both your participants and their parents. Uh, athlete eligibility, you need to be able to monitor and verify that. You need to have your pre-participation physical. You need to follow rules. You need to have that on file. You need to have their insurance information on file. You need to understand the academic requirements and check that and follow that you need to understand age, residency, residency, and school transfer requirements, and you need to understand that, verify it, and work with your athletic director or administrator to make sure all those things are in place and you don't break any of those rules. And then when you select team captains, you need to have a selection process. Are you going to select them? Are you and the coaching staff going to select them? Are you going to have an application process where people have to apply and want to be a captain? What kind of responsibilities are you going to have out of your captains? Are you going to make them serve the team? Are they going to set up the locker room? Are they going to have to communicate with the team? Is that going to make a captain's council? Are they going to get to meet with the coaches every now and then? Are they going to be involved in some decision making? Uh, are you going to let the team help select the captains? Uh, is it, are the captains going to be like game captains then, the captains that meet with the officials, or are they going to be more team captains and the people that meet with the officials are going to be the people that like your point guard or your quarterback or uh, your goalie or the people that really are on the field more. Because sometimes your captain doesn't have to be a player that plays all the time. They can be a great leader that isn't necessarily a star player. And then how are you going to manage your captains? So there's a lot of things that go into the thought process of that and think about that because that'll be our assignment at the end of the day. So our, so our fourth manager is the instructional manager. Instructional management refers to leading the process of teaching and learning, so the instructional process, mentoring, or the instruction or teaching of sports skills, as well as character skills. Got to remember, it's not just all about teaching the sports skills. We got to teach those character skills. And it also includes the coach being a role model. So let's break down the three different seasons of how we work with being an instructional manager and that function of instructional management. So in the preseason, you have to consider what specific sports skills, what different strategies we might use in the game uh, or uh, for our team or our individuals, if it's an individual sport we might teach, and what character skills are we going to provide with our team? Sometimes that's going to change because we don't know until we get out there and do things. We might go, oh, we might need to put some of these strategies in. This doesn't work and we might adapt. But at the beginning, we need to kind of consider what are the skills, strategies, and characters that we want to teach throughout the season? Because that'll help us organize it. 
we'll kind of organize in the season how do we want to go about teaching these skills because things are systematic you know, want to have your scope and sequence and your building blocks and then we'll adapt as we go we might decide oh this isn't working maybe somebody got injured maybe somebody moved in maybe somebody set some goals and they achieved them maybe some opponents do different things so we might have to adapt as we go don't be afraid to adapt don't be afraid to be a critical thinker and and change your course along the way but organize your season plan to move things along set some goals what goals are you going to set are we going to set our individual goals to help us set some team goals all right how are you going to set those goals so set some goals um, for your team not just about wins and losses but set some goals on character skills and you know achievement type goals and then if we do that we will move on to the season because we want to meet our goals and put those things into action for our skills and strategies and character so during the season we'll start developing our practice plans to help our athletes meet our goals and teach those skills strategies and character skills that we thought we were going to teach as well as anything we need to adapt so remember are our practice plans helping us meet our sports skills goals our character skills goals and our individual athletes goals so we need to consider integrating not only things to teach our sports skills teams to work on our things to work on our strategies we're all as team sports coaches we get caught up in what do we need to do to win this next game but we need to remember we got to throw something in every week on team building. We got to throw in something every week on character development. We got to remember there's got to be a time to cooperate. We always remember that there's things to compete. So can we throw one of those things in every week? Probably one from each category every week. How do we integrate activities? They can be within our drills and within the way we do things already. They, they can be within our sports teaching. They can be within our regular activities but how can we put a focus on some of those things <clears throat> so how do we integrate activities to put our philosophy within our practice plan every week to mirror or build our culture or to provide opportunities to provide inputs from our participants to help them reach their goals at least once a week so we need to do that in the season we can't forget that it can't just be all about skills and preparing for the next opponent so in the postseason pull out your instructional plans and reflect on them and review and consider did they help us meet our goals did they have team building and character development and if not how do we get better at that next year where do we need to improve is it do we need to improve and change the skills we're teaching or do we need to improve the teaching strategies we're using right is it the skills or is it how we went about putting the skills in did we not teach the basics enough or did we not give enough time for them to have some individual work where we're always on top of them and we stifled their ability to critically think because we were always coaching them like was it the skills or was it the strategies All right how do coaches then improve how do we get better at picking the right skills or how do we involve as instructors to use better teaching strategies or to provide better feedback for our learners or to be able to observe better to understand what to teach better so then that's where we can develop our own professional development plans for each of our coaches and us as a staff to do in the off season so we're better for next year So management function number five is the event manager event management refers to the process of planning organizing running all the events that might occur during a season so this could be practices and games those are the ones that come to mind right away any type of team meeting it could be meeting with your players or your coaching staff or your parents it could be those educational meetings or even scouting report meetings or disciplinary meetings it could be travel to a game it could be a pep rally it could be senior night it could be any special promotion or event 
It could be a variety of different events you have. It could be a barbecue for the team, all right? It could be an alumni night. So there's all kinds of different events you could have. So it's a process of planning, organizing, or running anything involved with the team or a game. So we'll break down our three different areas, preseason, in season, and postseason. And in season is going to be game or event management. And then we'll have another slide that zeroes in on our game management too. So in the preseason, we want to schedule and organize our events. Like I said, that could be practices, games. We got to think of like tournaments or, um, you know, you might even think of like classics or travel events or things like that. And then we'll kind of plan what our special promotion and events might be. So special events, when we think of special events, you might think of uh, team meetings, parent meetings. You might have like scrimmages or preseason events or jamborees. Uh, you've heard of the midnight madnesses, the meet the team events. You might bring in guest speakers or have some kind of guest uh, character development program. You might have media days before the season starts. You might have special games events like senior nights, homecomings, uh, the special things where they have like, you know, the dance coronation events, uh, military night, coaches versus cancer. Um, you might have all kinds of different things like that. So there's going to be all kinds of different special events. Uh, every school district is going to be different. Every college is going to be different. Um, there, there's a variety of different ones. Does your practice and game schedule meet the requirements? That's another thing. So every organization is going to have different seasons when it's the first time you can have a event and when's the last time you can have an event how many what's the minimum number of games you can have to qualify for the postseason what's the maximum number of games you're allowed to have in a season if you play in a tournament how many games do you have to cut off your schedule how many is the maximum amount of tournaments you have how many is the maximum amount of games you can have in a tournament when you start getting into individual sports like What's the amount of meets you can go to or the amount of contests you can go to? If you do a tournament, how many can you do in a day? What, is, what, what does that cut off of the maximum amount of things you can do? So you're going to have to look at those numbers of things. How many practices do you have to have before you can participate in a contest? Is there any break you have to have? If you have like a break for injury, um, do you have to then have so many practices before you can participate successfully again? Uh, and then you look at equipment. So sports that require equipment like football, hockey, even baseball, softball, field hockey, lacrosse, you have to build up your practices and specific equipment. So how do you meet those different things? So that's important in the preseason. And sometimes that bleeds over to the season as well. Uh, in season, so game management, like I said, we'll dig more into this, but I'll give you a, a a little bit of brief information on that. The head coach needs to try to focus on the practices and games in the season. They're going to have to oversee and have some uh, input and be involved in things because you can't just remove yourself because then they're like, oh, the head coach don't care. But you're going to have to delegate the work, the behind the scenes work, on as many of your special events as you appropriately can to other staff members. You're going to have to be involved in them, but the roll up your sleeve, get the works done, to do all the behind the scenes stuff. You're going to have to show up to them and be there and be involved, but you're going to have to have a lot of the work done for your special events done by some of your other coaching staff or maybe just some other people in your organization that like you don't really want to take your coaching staff away from focusing on practicing games either. You might have another teacher um, that assist you with those things. Maybe your athletic director helps you out. Maybe you have an activities director. Maybe you have other teachers that help you set up some of these things. Maybe you have parent volunteers. So the postseason. The postseason, you want to reflect and evaluate on all of the team's events. On your meetings, your practices, your games, your tournaments. Do we want to change up the schedule? But on your special promotions and events, too. What should we schedule for next year? Is there anything we don't like we want to get rid of? Is there anything we need to change the dates on? Are there any new ideas? Should we add something? Um, when can we start scheduling? Do we need to, is it a year that we need to change our contest and tournament schedule? Sometimes those are on a two-year cycle. Sometimes you can change it every year. What are our contracts in? 
How do we schedule our special events? Do our home and away dates flip? So do we need to reschedule some of our special events? Do we need to change when homecoming is? Do we you know, have parent teacher conferences at a certain time if we're at a school? Um, like how do the tournaments move? Like when can we start scheduling things? Do we need to look at our schedule? How does it coincide with our school schedule? Uh, you know, some things like the spring break change and now all of a sudden we need to like take all those games because people are going to be on spring break. We don't want to have, you know, a Friday night game at home when proms that weekend because people will be getting their hair done and getting suits and different things. So like we, we got to look at a lot of different things when we're scheduling our contest uh, as an event manager. When we talk about games management, we got to dig into that a little bit more. Contest preparation is a big thing. Is the facility scheduled? You got to make sure that's done well out in advance. Is the event staff scheduled? That needs to be done prior to the beginning of the season. Do you have to have somebody to run the scoreboard, be the PA or public address announcer? That's the person that says things over the microphone. Do you have to have somebody to handle the tickets? Do you do ticket sales? Do you sell tickets in advance? Do you sell tickets at the door? And then do people have to then come give the ticket to somebody? So is that multiple people? Do you have security on duty? How many people is that? Uh, is that somebody in the parking lot? Is that some, multiple people in the event? Is that somebody at the ticket office? Do you schedule officials or do you get that to an officials coordinator in advance? That has to be done well in advance sometime over a year. And then what about your athletic trainer? So is everybody, uh, um, handled. You might have to have a score book operator. If it's at football, do you have to have people to run the chains, the chain gang? So make sure you have your event staff scheduled well in advance. Have you verified people then? So that's going to be short in advance, like a week or so in advance. Have you verified that your officials, your event staff, as well as your opponents are uh, going to be at the event? If you're at an away game, have you verified the event and the event time and the exact facility you're going to? Your game materials, have you developed those? Are you advertising your event somewhere? Do you have a game program ready? And if so, you're going to have to get, you know, the opponent's uh, roster, make sure your roster is up to date, do all those things. Do you print tickets or do you have a roll of them? Uh, are you doing some kind of ticketing uh, app? What about your cash drawers? Do you have the right amount of money in there? Um, and that could be for your concession stand, for your ticket sales. What about concessions? Are you re responsible for that? Um, you might have to stock your concessions. How do your contracts work? Or are you responsible to go to Sam's or, or somewhere else to purchase that? It, like that takes up quite a bit of time if you're in charge of concessions, but that could be revenue source for you as well. What about the facility? Is it prepared for game day? Do you have your equipment ready? Is it marked if it's a field you have to mark or the bleachers pulled out or all the ancillaries such as the locker room, the area where people come in, the foyer, uh, the restrooms for fans, uh, the officials rooms. Do you have uh, who gets the water for the benches, who gets maybe chairs out, uh, who brings benches out if it's an outdoor facility who mows the lawn, gets the field ready, uh, who drags the field if it's outdoor, who maybe moves goals, uh, all those things, who gets the game balls out, like is the facility prepared for game day and then is it set up immediately for the game. Contest game management. So that's right at game time and during the game. You have to be prepared to manage behavior. That's going to be of your participants. You don't want them to get out of hand. You have to have them show good sportsmanship as well as just be good sports players. You're going to have to maybe manage your staff because you never know when they could get out of hand. You could have to handle your fans and your parents as well. You never know if you're going to have an administrator on duty to handle that. Uh, what about the people that are doing your video and statistics? Are you training them up? Are you managing and leading them? Do you have to get the equipment ready for them? Uh, do you have to handle your own equipment? Make sure stuff's there. Uh, so how are you going to handle all that? Do you have your coaches set up? We talked about setting up uh, your responsibilities earlier and, and what everybody's job was and their roles. But what about making sure that coaches handle their responsibilities within the game? Because some people get hyper-focused on the game and they forget that my role is the bench coach, my role is 
offense or defense, they might get caught up in the game, caught up with an official, caught up uh, with, with an opponent or a parent or even one of their players. So you got to make sure people stay on their responsibilities. And then you're going to have to be in the flow of the game without, once again, getting caught up with something else. Are you handling your pregame responsibilities, your in-game uh, and halftime uh, adjustments and doing all those things? And are you um, making sure that you're, you know, doing the offensive and defensive adjustments uh, for a team sport? Are you making sure you're giving, observing your participants seeing what's going on, understanding things and giving them timely feedback so they can improve and keeping your focus away from the things that don't matter, like, you know, fans and officials. I mean, you have to see those things, but you have to keep your focus on making game time adjustments and giving critical feedback to your participants that can help them improve their performance. And then your post contest. Are you handling your post game routines? Are you handling those with your teams and participants? With your coaches are you getting things out to the media like statistics immediately are you handling things with boosters and parents if you need to are you taking care of game results and stats and then are you doing everything you need to to supervise things shut down your facility make sure all of your participants get where they need to go um, and do all of those things so there's a lot of things that go along with game management So the sixth management function is the logistics manager. So logistics management refers to the process of handling any of the moving parts. Logistics handling moving parts. So that could be transportation, equipment, uniforms, people, anything that really moves. So this includes the planning, ordering, inspecting, observing, documenting, moving, maybe even securing of any of those moving parts. So let's break down real quick the three different phases or seasons that you might have to worry about the moving parts as a coach. So the preseason, you're going to have to consider all your different facility concerns. Are we going to have to plan, order, inspect anything with the facility? Um, are we missing um, our mat movers if we're a wrestling coach, any of our equipment movers um, that we might have to uh, bring our uh, dollies out to or our carts out to be able to move equipment on game day or our uh, golf carts, our gators, uh, all in working order. What about our transportation? Do we have our transportation set up? Uh, do we have it scheduled for all of our teams? Do, are our buses in working order if we own the buses? If not, do we have a contract set up or we have a bidding process out there? Have we ordered all of our equipment and supplies uh, that go, go along with that? Um, a lot of times you'll have to order uniforms a year in advance. Uh, do we have all of our different supplies for our different support uh, sports uh, ordered? So when the season's over, you usually have that inventory turned in. We'll go over that in the postseason, but you'll, you'll inventory uh, all your equipment and requisition things for the next year and then you're going to go over those things so you're going to check with your facility make sure there aren't any concerns make sure it's up to date you'll order your equipment and supplies as soon as your budget turns over you should already have that order put together and requisitioned and get that order done and then make sure that your transportation for the season set up for your people as well as you might have to have you know transportation for equipment set up too you never know when you're going to like, you're going to have to move at times. Like I would have to move soccer goals onto fields or move fences on and off of fields in between seasons. So you might have to have transportation for equipment as well. So in the end season, you're going to maintain or move things like equipment. You might have to move uniforms. You're going to move them. You know, people are going to use them. You're going to wash them uh, at times, you know, sometimes at high school you give people the uniforms and they take care of them and you collect them at the end but in college a lot of times you're going to they're just going to turn their uniform in and you're going to launder them and get, have it hanging on their locker form and then you're going to move people around you're going to move them to games you might even take them to practice so it could be things like game setup 
Is the athletic trainer responsible to move somebody on and off the field with an injury, you know, with a cart? Like how, how is, how do you move all those things around? It's not just moving people to and from a game. It might be moving people within a game. Do people like the security get the officials? If the officials room, do they move them to halftime? Do the security walk with your officials or the opponent or even your head coach before and after a game? So how does that all, all work? It's the process of handling all the moving parts, remember? So we need to continue to inspect, monitor, prepare, and repair things during the season. Um, that could be anything with our transportation or equipment. If you get uniform, it gets blood on it. How do you get blood out? Well, there's different chemicals that do that. Uh, we used to carry hydrogen peroxide uh, with us anywhere and hydrogen peroxide, if you put it on blood immediately, it eats the enzyme out and kills all the bacteria in the blood. It'll take blood out of a white uniform immediately and then you can put it in a plastic bag and make, you should always gotta make sure you have extra uniforms because if somebody gets blood on a uniform, they can't continue to play in it. So you need to have extra uniforms to switch people out. You'll put hydrogen peroxide on that uniform where the blood was, it'll eat the enzyme out of the blood immediately so it doesn't stain and it actually um, disinfects it. You'll, you can have the other chemical, there's different brands put on top of that um, to continue to sanitize it, put it in your plastic bag, and then you can launder it uh, within the next 24 to 48 hours. So you have somebody contracted to be able to repair uniforms as well. In the postseason, you're going to have to do different things. You're going to reflect and evaluate on the processes, on your equipment, on your facility. Do we need to do any upgrades? Do we need to put in any request for a capital budget improvement? Do we make that timeline? Do we need to get any bids? What do we need to do different next year? Do we need to change things up with our transportation, with our equipments, with our uniform, with our people, with any of our logistical plans? How do we move those things around? How do we handle those moving parts? We need to make sure we collect, secure, order, and close out for the season. So it's really important to consider how you collect uniforms at the end of the season and then how you secure them. So at the end of any season, you should consider your collection process. Do I need to collect uniforms because at the very last game, because I might not get them back? So if you're a coach at, of a spring sport at a high school, say baseball or track and field, where you might be playing after your school year's out for your seniors. Because sometimes seniors don't come that last week of school. And if they have everything done, they're gonna graduate, they don't turn their stuff in, what happens? They decide they really like that baseball uniform or that track and field sweatsuit, and they wanna keep it. Well, now you're down a uniform. It's hard sometimes to order one uniform and it gets expensive. And what happens if that uniform wasn't just an easy stock uniform? Well, now you can never replace it. They don't mind paying the fine and they might not ever pay the fine. So it's hard to get that back because you might not see them. They go off to college. So a lot of times you want to tell them you're gonna have to bring some clothes. I'm gonna collect that right after the game and you're not gonna leave this locker room until we collect it and put it in a bag. And then the coach is gonna be responsible to wash it. They're gonna to have to bring it back. Maybe there's a facility there at the school to wash it, take it to the cleaners, whatever the case. Um, you might want to collect that at the end of the game. When I was a college coach at our very last game, we collected everything, even their bag at the last game because we were always at a tournament and they wore their own street clothes home. Uh, except our travel suit. They get to wear our travel sweatsuit home and then they brought the travel sweatsuit in the next game because they were going to steal our game shorts for sure. Um, and we watched them throw it in the bag. So, um, and after our last practice, it was the same thing. So um, you had to do that or stuff was going to disappear. You have to then secure your stuff after you get it clean and lock it in a safe place. You're going to have to do an inventory, physical inventory of everything you have. You're going to have to then requisition things you need and turn that into whoever makes that decision and 
do the, the requisition is going to be the things you need for the following year, a budget request, and then you will do your close down of that stuff for the season. So the final management position is the financial manager. So the financial manager uh, handles all of the processes of overseeing financial information, financial operations required for running your athletic or activities program. So this could be anything from budgeting to accounting to marketing to purchasing to the public relations to fundraising to controlling to cash flow management to sales to collections and all kinds of things that refer to financial operations for running a program. So we'll break down the three different seasons. First of all, every school is going to have some kind of written process and some rules, processes and procedures for handling money and financial operations, including the purchasing process. Is there a requisition? Does somebody have to approve things? When do you have to turn in money? Can you take checks? What, like at what process do you have to go to bidding if it's over $500? Um, can you get refunded or reimbursed if you make a purchase on your credit card? Do you have to get things tax exempt? So you have to train all your staff on the organization's financial and purchasing processes because you don't some, want somebody to go outside of that because money gets to be a big deal. People can get terminated over that or written up. So it's important to train all your staff on that immediately. Then you have to follow those processes and procedures to requisition and complete processes to make all the necessary purchases for the upcoming season. Like at the end of last year, was that done? Was inventory done? If not, you need to immediately do inventory and you need to make those requisitions and follow the correct process to make the purchases for the immediate things we need now. Like was, you know, equipment, uniforms, all those things needed, and then continue to do those as necessary along the way. Did you plan fundraisers at the end of last season? If not, in the preseason, you really need to plan your fundraisers and try to complete as many before the season as possible so you're not tasked with them in the season. But sometimes you really can't do them. You don't have your players around. You don't have your fans around. Some of those you have to do in the season because that's when you're marketable and can make your money. But you need to at least plan them in the preseason. During the season, you need to stay current on all your documentation. Do you need to continue to make purchases and requisitions? If you're doing travel, do you have to complete travel uh, forms? Travel requisitions, do you need to complete any reimbursement forms? Do you need to um, do a cash flow analysis, monitor the budget? Uh, do you need to uh, turn in money that you collected, whether it was at games or fundraisers or ticket sales or concession sales? Make sure you complete all that documentation and turn it in in a timely manner. Regular monitor your budget. Do you get credit for ticket sales and income um, or not? Um, make sure you're not overspending. Make sure you're going to have enough money to get through the season. And then continue to work on your fundraising because in the season is when you do have an opportunity to make money. But you were involved in the planning process, but delegate some of it. Uh, you'll focus your marketing on in-season revenue streams. What can we really like sell during games and when we have all our players around? But you need to really have some kind of focus on that cash flow to make sure people aren't you know, taking, taking the fundraising money and using it for themselves. So you have to uh, have some kind of cash flow management and uh, overseeing that. Even if you're delegating the fundraising, you need to make sure that that person follows the organizational cash flow deposit and that that revenue stream is being used correctly and that money is coming in, not just going in somebody's pocket. In the postseason, you need to review your budget. Make sure the accounting processes balance out. Make any final payments on anything you purchased. Make sure your fundraising purchases are paid out. Um, see where your money is. If you have any money that you have to spend before the end of the year out of your budget and some accounts that don't roll over, that you make those requisitions and purchases before any deadlines. 
complete any final inventory, develop any budget re requisitions or requests for the upcoming year, any capital projects, uh, bid any big projects out, look for uniforms, look for specials at the end of the year that you could use for the next year. So final inventory and collection for spring sports, especially um, those like we talked about last time uh, in the logistics, you need to collect those things that you're not gonna be able to get back. Um, so plan and complete any additional fundraising you can. Is there anything we can do at the end of the season? Can we do an awards dinner? Can we do an end of season dinner? Can we do some things before the people in the program leave? Can we you know, hit up alumni? Can we plan some stuff for the summer? Um, what can we do to add some funds in before the end of the year? So we'll wrap up chapter 18 with a reflection, managing your team. So what are the seven important functions of managing your team? We discuss those as the seven different management positions, but they're the roles and responsibilities coaches take on in their leadership and management role. You have to be a policy manager, an information manager, a personnel manager, an instructional manager, an event manager, the logistics or moving parts manager, and the financial manager. So what are some of the various tasks for managing participants? There are five different tasks we kind of went over. If you're at a private school or a college, you're going to have to recruit participants. You're going to have to evaluate and select participants. You're going to have to communicate with participants effectively. You're going to have to monitor and understand athlete eligibility. And then you're going to have to select team captains. So those are five important tasks. There are a lot of important duties and concepts associated with game management. In the pregame, you have to make sure the facility is scheduled, the event staff is scheduled. Have you verified things like officials, opponents, and event staff? Are your game materials ready? That's your advertising, your programs, your tickets, your cash drawer, are you in charge of concessions or not? You have to check to see if the facility is prepared for game day. All right. <clears throat> in game or contest management, are you checking behavior of uh, people? Are you managing that? Your participants, your staff, your fans, your parents? Is your equipment and staff ready? That's your video, it's stat statistics, is the bench ready? Uh, water ready, things like that. Are you on top of your coaching responsibilities? That's your assistant coaches as well as your own. Um, Pre-game, in-game, halftime adjustments. And are you focusing in on making sure you are coaching your players? You're observing them and you're providing them feedback. And then post-game, are you making sure you're getting the right information out to people? You're getting your team off the floor. You're doing all those different things to communicate with parents, alumni, you're running your post-game locker room things right, you're getting your media stuff out. So <clears throat> think about it. How could you use your management and leadership knowledge, skills, and abilities to develop a process to select team captains? Well, that's gonna be your assignment. So we'll talk about that on the next slide, but think about what we talked about previously in a previous module. You talked about developing character skills. We've talked about our leadership skills, All right? So we've talked about communicating with athletes to develop maybe even team roles. You've talked about your philosophy and what values are important. You've talked about your purpose in coaching. So how do we blend all that together to consider how we might want to select team captains. So we'll go over that on the next slide. So your assignment for this uh, lecture, your, this virtual lecture, is going to be on selecting team captains. So you're going to have to come up with a process uh, on selecting team captains, but first you'll have to you uh, list some advantages and disadvantages of the different ways about selecting team captains and that's going to be from the reading so here's the assignment details and as always there's a little more information in the assignment box in canvas so you can go under uh, module 12 uh, and look at the assignment selecting team captains that's under uh, chapter 18 information 
So to successfully complete this assignment, start by reading chapter 18 of the textbook, Managing Your Team. Consider information and documents from module 12 on Canvas. You might want to complete some different research, maybe do some interviews, talk to coaches, other people that have done this, use some personal background, get on the internet. So this assignment is designed to help you consider the selection process to determine captains or leaders for an athletic team. You want to provide a full and detailed response using information from the chapter in your research for each of the prompts. Use college level writing. It needs to be original work. Provide enough information uh, that I know that you know what you're talking about. So here's your outline of the questions. Use numbers in, in, when you do this. Number one, list several, so that means more than one, pros, which are advantages, and several cons, which are disadvantages, of having coaches, coaches only, select team captains. And that is detailed in the book. If you have the book, go in there and read it. Number two, list several pros, once again are advantages, and several cons, which again are disadvantages, and several means more than one of each, of having athletes or your players select the team captains. Number three, list which sport you're going to discuss in this assignment. Consider which sport you want to coach. Explain the level two. So tell me, is it high school or college or community? And then explain how important is the role of the team captain in your sport. So think about this a little bit. Some sports have important roles and responsibilities for their captains. Some captains may get to officially speak to the officials and some may have different roles within a team. So explain that. So you need to explain what the role of the, of the captain is. So number four, I need you to list and explain the leadership qualities that your team captain must possess and then why you want them to have each of these leadership qualities. So I want you to number these one through five. You need to have five of them. So under four, you can number them one through five or A, B, C, D, and E. So, or you can bullet point them. So I need you to separate them out. All right, list a leadership quality explain what it is, and then explain why you feel that this leadership quality is important for them to have. And then number five, I need you to fully describe and describe it so I can understand it, the process you will use to select team captains. Will you use the coach selected method, the player selected method, or have some kind of combination of the two? Are you gonna have an application process? Are you going to have people earn their captainship by doing this, this, and this? Are you going to rotate captains based on some kind of criteria throughout the season based on grades or what they've done in practice or things that they might have earned or behavior? So what are you process are you going to use to select and keep people or demote or promote team captains? Be very detailed on this. All right, and explain it in full detail. And then explain why as well. So explain why. The deadline for this assignment is Friday, December 1st at 8 p.m. Make sure you get this turned in by the deadline. There's Once again, there's more details on this in Canvas. So your module 12 assignments. We've already uh, completed journal eight assignment that was due Tuesday in the assignment developing team rules that was due Wednesday. Hopefully you turn those in. If not, get those turned in. Uh, not accepting late assignments here at the end. Uh, heavy penalties. Uh, chapter 18 journal assignment. That's due Thursday. So that was basically taking your notes from this virtual presentation on the 11 high points. So finish that up. Uh, hopefully you completed that while following along with this virtual lecture, uh, the audio enabled PowerPoint. Uh, so complete those. Uh, you might have to go back and rewind and listen to a few things, um, but get those turned in uh, by Thursday, uh, November 30th at 8 p.m. And then complete the assignment I just went over, selecting team captains. It's due Friday, December 1st at 8 p.m. Uh, there's a little bit more information in the assignment box on Canvas. Uh, follow the instruction to answer those five questions and develop your process for selecting team captains and explain why you went with that process. Uh, get that turned in by Friday. 
and then make sure you're working on your personal philosophy of coaching, which is your final project uh, to wrap up module 10, 11, and 12 and use as a culminating assignment to pull all of the information together on the coaching unit. So your culminating assignments, your observation log, remember that is due this Friday, December 1st. Make sure you have that fully completed uh, day by day has to have your time logged and signed. You need to have your total time at the bottom. If you're a uh, wellness major, it's 20 hours. If you're a PE major, it's 30 hours. It has to be fully completed and turned in by Friday. Uh, if you finish that assignment, you're eligible to do the observation reflection paper. That's due Saturday at 8 p.m., which is December 2nd. Make sure you follow along with that observation reflection paper assignment guide. You need to use headings, put your title down, your headings, follow the explicit directions to provide the exact information requested in the paper. It's a signature assignment. It's graded stringently on the paper. It follows either the Lincoln University Health and Wellness Standards or the Missouri Teaching Standards. You have to provide the exact information we're looking for to get a good grade. We want you to score in the skilled or better category. Um, that would be providing information from the course uh, and tying it to an example within your observation. So make sure you're writing that reflection paper based on the course material as well as the observation. On Tuesday next week, December 5th, during class time, 9.25 to 10.40, we will have a Zoom classroom. So you need to, before that time, check the link. It's in Canvas, it's in the announcement, it's in the handout I gave you before we left for Thanksgiving. Uh, there is a special page on Canvas for the uh, December 5th classroom that provides all the information. Uh, make sure you get on there. If you've done the first two assignments on this list, you can do your observation presentation. So um, log on to that Zoom classroom. Uh, the observation link, uh, uh, cl Zoom classroom link will be available at least 10 minutes before class time. Check your computer to make sure that your audio and video is working before that. Make sure you go over the outline. You don't make a PowerPoint or anything, but make sure you go over the outline before that. Uh, you can check that in Canvas um, on the observation presentation assignment. I actually gave you a handout on that as well. Uh, you will just talk about a minute per point on that outline uh, to introduce your observation, talk through uh, a variety of points on that, to talk through uh, their communication style, their leadership style, uh, some uh, different things they've done. Uh, with assessment, um, with teaching uh, a sports skill, teaching a character skill. So we'll share through that. Uh, everybody will have an opportunity to share. I'll just call on you individually. So make sure you log on to that link and you're prepared for that observation presentation. Uh, I will uh, next week uh, have your uh, activity. Uh, this will tie into module 12, but it'll be in module 13. Uh, it is <clears throat> a short PowerPoint. It'll be audio enabled. Uh, you'll watch that on Canvas. Um, there'll be a link to that, um, just like there was for this week. It'll be on activities. So we'll have different activities to build team culture and team climate. Um, and I'll go through a variety of those, explain those, and then we will do one. Uh, you'll watch a short video on lollipop moments. And at the end of that video, it will explain how to uh, do a lollipop moment, uh, an activity to do with your team, and you will do the activity, and that is uh, writing a letter of gratitude. So uh, you'll watch that video PowerPoint and complete the assignment that'll be on Canvas. Uh, I'll have that up um, probably uh, actually uh, this week sometime, so you can do that anytime, but it'll be due no later than Thursday, December 7th at 8 p.m. Uh, make sure you're working on your personal philosophy of coaching, that final project. You should have all the information to work on that and get it completed now. You can turn it in early, anytime, uh, but the deadline is Saturday, December 9th. So get started, get that done early. Uh, there's a very limited window to turn that in for a grade. Uh, your course post-test, it'll be available uh, now as well. All the content is out there that uh, you would need to be able to complete the course post-test. It's a carbon copy of the pre-test. The final deadline is Tuesday, December 12th at 8 p.m., but please don't wait till the final deadline. Once that's open, go ahead and uh, complete the course post-test. Uh, 
on mine and then compare that once I grade it because there's a couple multiple choice or a couple fill in the blank questions that I'll have to assess. Once you get your final grade, look at that and compare it to your course pretest and see how much you improved uh, doing analysis uh, between your two scores and see how much you improved over time. All right, so that will be all of the uh, assignments for the course. Uh, see you uh, next week uh, when you come back to do the module 13 uh, work, your observation presentation in the Zoom classroom, and then you will do your module 13 uh, PowerPoint in Canvas and complete your assignment letter of gratitude.